That was the venerable Lama Pena Wang Dak here on Happy Hour on Monday, a Tibetan monk talking about how he thinks corporate America should help Tibet. That's something that probably would not sit well with Beijing. Right now, as you can see on the other side of me, the Olympic torch is being run through San Francisco. You're looking at live pictures, and there have been protests for and against China. And as you can see, there's a lot of security surrounding the Olympic torch. Right now, it's peaceful, but it's been kind of hectic out there and a, a little tense out there uh, all day long. And joining us now is Steve Orlands. He is the president of the National Committee on U.S.-China Relations. Welcome to Happy Hour, Steve. And it's good that we have you here because we also wanted to look at the other side. You know, we've been talking, like, for example, on Monday with the monk about how that, uh, you know, and we've, we've had a lot of people here. They're supporting Darfur and saying that China needs to crack down on human rights. And this is a great opportunity with the Olympics there. But we also want to look at the pro-China side. Uh, your group, for one, what does it do in relation to China? Well, we're pro-America, but we're, um, we, for we foster education of Americans about China and Chinese about America. So we are interested in educating the American public about what is going on in China and the Chinese public about what's going on in America. And, okay, and so the flip side of this debate then, you know, why should, pe why should we have the Olympics in China? Why should we have relations with China? Why should we do business with China uh, with the Olympics going on? there this summer especially? Well, again, you have to look at it in a historical context. If you look at China over the last 30 years, since 1979, when they started the reform and opening up policy, China has progressed tremendously. And that in 2008, as China hosts the Olympics, this is kind of like the capstone of that progress. To talk about boycotting the Olympics, talking about boycotting the opening ceremony will be nothing but kind of um, incite the nationalism that kind of the Chinese feel about the Olympics to doing things which are not in our interests. Now, now, Steve, you mentioned that part of your mission is to educate the American public about what's going on in China. The Dalai Lama mentioned the other day that we are only hearing a small fraction of what's actually happening in Tibet. Can you tell us, like, why, how is it we're going to get this information? If you guys are trying to educate us, educate us. What's going on in Tibet right well, now? Well, what was interesting, by the way, I think that was a good interview. That actually Thank was you. a very good interview. One of Some of the things he said was, don't boycott the Olympics. Don't take symbolic acts that do nothing to really foster the situation in Tibet. The events in Tibet, I think, are sad and somewhat tragic. No one believes the Chinese are seeking to wipe out Tibetan culture. But the events that occurred were a reflection, I think, of 30 years of Tibetan You're unhappiness. You're using past tense. Shouldn't you use present tense? They are occurring right now. The events in Tibet are occurring right now. There's well, I'm saying the riots. events on, um, on March 10th, okay. that the violence on March 10th was very much an ethnic riot. So it was basically and Tibetans are deciding you saying that, that, that the Hanjin... an isolated event? Again, trying to understand what's really going on over there. It sounded to me as if talking to the... No, it's not isolated from the years of Chinese policy And even right Tibet. now, though, I'm saying, is, it, there, is there still turmoil? Are there riots happening right now? Are the people in Tibet... Are Tibetans safe right now? Are Tibetans safe? I mean, they, it would be difficult for a Tibetan to protest today that the response to the violence, the Chinese government response to the violence, has been to crack down on all Tibetan protests, that the situation prior to March 10th was a lot more stable. But clearly today, a Tibetan would not be able to protest. And Steve, you, you're very much an insider in, in this, and you've probably <laughs> talked to uh, chi uh, Chinese diplomats potentially on a daily basis. Are they open to pursuing this change and maybe having a dialogue with Tibet? Are they, do they, I mean, are they feeling pressured by all of this with the Olympics being there this summer? Well, I think the, the, the uh, riots actually probably hardened the Chinese position rather than soften the Chinese position. That they, you know, they really, China, because a result of its development, has become much more accommodating in its stance towards lots of different issues. We saw, for instance, a huge event, which wasn't which wasn't covered extensively in the media, which were the elections on Taiwan, Taiwan uh, on uh, March 22nd, which Taiwan has been the single greatest impediment to kind of uh, good U.S.-China relations. And the people of Taiwan basically voted for economic and social integration, right. whereas politically staying apart from China. 
and that that kind of was a new dawn in what I would call U.S.-China relations. And Tibet has kind of clouded that. A new dawn would be a wonderful thing. The more ch commerce we do, the more bullish it is for America and society and markets. Thanks Steve, so much for being here, Steve. Thank you My very pleasure. much. And thank we're going to keep, uh, keep track of those. We were showing you live pictures a moment ago with the Olympic torch being run through San Francisco.